Okay, so this next one is about soil tests. Lots of people sending in their soil tests, wanting me to read it, wanting me to help them out with it. A lot of people seriously thinking that they have major problems. And it doesn't matter if you're using the soil savvy test that we have, which is the one I like because it's just super simple. You can get that at thelawncarenut.com. Or if you're using a, a university test or a lab test, there's, they're all going to work for you. They're all, you know, they're all going to be a little bit different. There's all going to be different things that they show. But for the most part, what you're going to get back is something that a lot of you guys think is a grade. And I think that's what happens. You guys get the soil test back and it shows you this nice bar graph of ideal places to be for these particular nutrients and you're low in some and you feel like that's judging you. You feel like you're being graded and it's like, oh my gosh, I have to get this fixed now or I'm gonna, I gotta bring this grade up before the end of the quarter or what I think some of you think is I have to bring all of these grades up in my next round. Uh, my next application, I have to solve every one of these problems, these deficiencies in my lawn Oh my gosh. And that's where I want to tell you the answer is no to that. I want you to rather think of your soil test as a blood test. It's one of those things where your doctor looks to understand where you're at, where the norm should be, and then he gives you recommendations to get yourself to the norm. What the doctor doesn't say is I want you to eat right starting tomorrow and eat one year's worth of vegetables with all of these nutrients in them tomorrow and you're going to be good for a year. He doesn't say that. What he says is, I want you to cut out the cholesterol, I want you to cut out the carbs, or I want you to eat more leafy greens, or maybe you need some more, I mean, I don't know, I'm not a health person, but you guys get what I'm saying. You need more of this in your, you need more iron, so eat some spinach. Maybe he even does give you some supplements. He gives you some vitamins. Take a multivitamin, that's going to help level set you out. But he doesn't say take the whole bottle of vitamins today and you're good for 90 days until your next application or until your next round. He doesn't do that. He says, take it over time. Some things will build up in the body. Some things are used by the body. And so a lot of times, if you have a blood test later on, a year later, and things didn't change, this is another thing that people panic about. They're like, hey, I was low on nitrogen when I took my first test, and I took my second test a year later, and I'm low on nitrogen again in my soil test. Well, the doctor doesn't say, hey, you were low on one thing, and you're still low on it. Sometimes he says, okay, it hasn't changed. This particular thing may have been a little bit low, but it hasn't changed. That's good. That means you're not losing. You're not on the other side. And then he will adjust again to take you up. So think of it like blood testing. Think of it like directional data. Here is where I am deficient. So over time, over the next several months, I am going to add these particular elements. Now, I will tell you that you're always going to need nitrogen. Think of nitrogen like protein. You're always going to need it. I don't think there's ever a blood test that tells you, oh my gosh, you have too much protein. Maybe there are with certain diseases or something, but we're not going there. What I'm saying is in general blood tests, People need protein. You need to eat protein. And that's what nitrogen is. The lawn needs the nitrogen. It what makes It's what makes the grass green. If you want a green lawn, nitrogen is the thing you care about. You're always going to apply that. So nitrogen many times will be low. In fact, most tests will be low because it also doesn't stay in the soil long. It's volatile and it's gone. So one of those things you're always going to need is nitrogen. Now, the phos and the potash or the potassium, those are ones where you can choose your different ferts. What am I going to do? Maybe I'm going to use a starter fert that's a 10-10-10, and I'm going to get a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Maybe I'm going to use something that is an 1801, like our Green Punch, or a 2404, like our Carbon X, and I'm going to get a little bit of nitrogen like I need, and I'm also going to get me some potassium. Now, the other thing that you can use on your soil test, if you look at the parts per million, so don't just look at the fact that I'm low or high, but look at the parts per million needed and look at the difference in the micros and the macros. The macros will tell you a lot bigger amount, greater amount is needed than the micros. So if you're super low in boron, don't panic. I could literally spit in a cup and throw it on my lawn and get enough boron to change the test. By the way, Mule Team Borax put a little spoonful of that in some water and spread that over several thousand square feet and you'll get all the boron you need. We also use Mule Team Borax. We've used that before to knock out Creeping Charlie. That's a video that you can get if you go to Google search or go to YouTube and you search how to get rid of Creeping Charlie, you can find that there. But long story and the short of it is you have to understand that not all of these elements are needed in the same exact amounts. So that's why it's good to also have a nice micronutrient stack available to you, something you can spoon feed in.
Now, you're not always going to find the perfect product that's going to have only what you need and the things that you don't need. You're not going to have that, so it's okay to apply a product that's generally got everything and you need it for the micros, knowing that it's all going to come up. The other thing, though, that I want you to do is optimize your soil with humic acid because that's going to help to release a lot of what's in the soil naturally as a chelator and make a lot more things naturally available to the plant. So just think about that when you're doing a soil test. It isn't a problem you have to solve all in one application or in round two or solve it in round three. Think of it more like directional data and I'm gonna make good decisions going forward. Now, the last thing to think about, because again, people panic when they're low on things, is what does the lawn look like? Go out and, and trust me, get Milo. I always say Milorganite because it's what it is. If you want to get Sunnyland, if you want to get the Menards brand, if you want to get Bay State, if you want to get Ocean Grow, whatever you can get that's that bio solid, that Milorganite clone, get that and throw it down hard. Did the grass turn green and start growing? If it did, there is no need for panic. If you do that twice and it doesn't start growing, now, now there's probably a need for a little bit something more to look at. But what I'm getting at is, how does the grass look? Oh my gosh, I'm super low in boron. Yeah, but your grass is like so blue that people are slowing down to take pictures of it. You know what I mean? So the way it looks, and this is where a doctor will tell you too, there's some people that just run low on certain things. Their metabolism runs lower than normal. They run low on certain things in their blood, but they feel great. And the doctor a lot of times will say, well, I mean... I would like it if your this or that was higher in your blood, but you feel awesome. You feel great. So I don't, I don't want to mess with that too much. And that can happen with the lawn as well. So always think about that when you're doing a soil test. It's more like a blood test. It's more like directional, something we're going to work on over time. And we're going to keep retesting as we move along and as we improve. That way we know how to keep optimizing the strategy better and better year after year.